Well, yes and no. I think she could have done far more to bring Parliament with her as her Brexit position evolved over the last 18 months. So she's not blameless in all this. But equally, on the other side, I think Parliament has been quite slow to focus on the real issues at stake here. And I think the vote back in January that the Prime Minister lost by 230 was a massive luxury for parliamentarians. They went in and showed off, as it were. You know, let me stake out my position as being a proud Brexiter, rather than thinking there might be difficult choices and trade-offs ahead. Essentially, that threefold choice between this deal, no Brexit, or a no-deal Brexit. And I think that's starting to crystallise in people's minds now, which is why there are people saying that in two weeks' time this deal might still get through. You talk about some of the pro-Brexiteers who were part of that vote 230 defeat when it came to Theresa May's original attempt to get her own deal through. One person we heard from this morning, Jacob Rees-Mogg, now he's the head of a hardline faction within the Conservative Party here, known as the European Research Group, and what he said is he can now live with the Irish backstop, a very thorny issue, part of Theresa May's deal, so long as there's a deadline date put on it. That's very different to what he demanded just a few weeks ago, which is one of the reasons that we're now seeing this long delay, which is that he wanted the withdrawal agreement itself, the text, reopened. Is this a good example of someone just softening their position and does it show that he was being a bit disingenuous a few weeks ago? Well, I think there's several things worth saying. Firstly, there, as in British politics now, there's no such thing as a faction because there are factions within that faction. And the ERG is very divided. And the big question for many in the Conservative Party is how many die-hard Brexiters will just vote against this deal, whatever. Jacob Rees-Mogg, as you said, very interesting because he's sort of indicating that he won't be one of those people to hold out because, yes, he's changed his position. It has shifted dramatically, substantively. Now he's saying some sort of codicil would work for him and that would be fine. And the background to this, I think, is crucial, which is Theresa May, for the first time yesterday, started talking about the possibility of delaying March the 29th. And Jacob Rees-Mogg is amongst those Brexiters who has said repeatedly that that would be the thin end of the wedge that a delay means betrayal, it means sacrificing Brexit, and for some on the Brexit side, they would rather vote for Theresa May's deal than risk losing Brexit altogether. So does that mean that, in your view, what we heard again from Michelle Bunner this morning, that no deal has gone from a probability to a possibility is a realistic assessment of the situation right now? Well, I don't think much has changed around that, simply because there has always been a massive majority in Parliament that doesn't want no deal. But the problem remains what it's always been, which is you can't, for all that Yvette Cooper claims that her amendment would have done it, take no deal off the table unless you vote for something else. And that's the task that Parliament faces now. Not simply running out a long list of things it doesn't want, but deciding on one Brexit outcome it does want. And that's what we're waiting to see over the next couple of weeks. So when Stephen Barclay, the Brexit Secretary this morning, says no deal is still on the table, even though his Prime Minister has offered a vote to rule it out, what he's referring to is that point, that there is no deal as a possibility so long as no one can agree on an actual deal. You can't rule it out without changing the law, because by law we are leaving the European Union. Uh, what you can do is delay that day, but the default situation under law in this country, if nothing else happens, is that on the 29th of March we leave the European Union if we don't have a deal, so be it. So actually what Parliament has to do to definitively take no deal off the table, rather than push it back in time, is come up with another out outcome.